Good evening. Welcome to WSBI, your resource for success podcast program, where you get to meet inspiring women-owned businesses from across the country. And now for your host, Kimberly McElmore. Right. Good evening and welcome to WSBI, your resource for success podcast program, where you get to meet inspiring entrepreneurs and women owned businesses from across the country. I am your host, Kimberly McLemore and CEO and founder of the Women's Small Business Initiative, LLC, and an award winning author. And welcome to another night of sharing with us. We have Eric Seropian. Eric Seropian has a long history in promoting small businesses online. Eric grew up and lives in the South Bay area, which has been a pleasure. Eric is a SEO and SEM expert and founder of ThisIsMySouthBay.com. Eric's expertise is unique in that he specializes in both international and hyper-local SEO, helping founders, entrepreneurs, business leaders, and small business owners make sense of searchability and marketing on the web. So without further ado, please help me welcome to my platform, Eric Seropian. Hey, Eric, how are you? Hello, hello. Thank you for having me, Kimberly. I'm well. Well, it's been a pleasure, and I'm just glad that we finally are getting this done this evening and I'm excited to learn more about who you are and all the things that you're doing with your business and how you're helping others. But before we go down that path, Eric, why don't you tell my listeners just a little bit more about who you are? Um, who I am? Well, I own a digital marketing agency called This Is My South Bay. South Bay is a part of Los Angeles. Uh, that I've uh, grown up in, that I reside in. And um, I use this, uh, uh, our website and our social media as almost like a case study for building an online community. And the uh, online community can be geo-targeted. It could be within a particular interest. And so um, our, our specialty is in optimizing businesses for uh, to, to get ranked from uh, Google and Yahoo and Bing. Okay. All right. So let's backtrack a little bit and let's talk a little bit more about who you are personally. Um, have you lived in the South Bay area all your life? Pretty much my whole life between uh, Redondo Beach and Manhattan Beach and uh, Palos Verdes. I've in, in those suburbs there in the South Bay area. And uh, uh, back in the day, I used to be a jewelry designer owned a business in downtown LA in the jewelry district. Mm-hmm. And uh, we would be selling to jewelry stores. It was mostly business to business. And when the Great Recession happened, um, a lot of the jewelry stores started going out of business. Uh, a lot of it was moving online. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I started to uh, throw myself into marketing to figure out a way to be able to sell more business to consumer and to sell online. And as I fell into digital marketing, um, I really took to this thing called search engine optimization. Mm -hmm. And so while, uh, uh, you know, that, that kind of changed the trajectory of the business because, you know, there's no substitute for that free traffic coming in from Google. Right. uh, prospects that are looking for what you have to offer. And so uh, as, as I, uh, as our business took off again, um, I was doing some consulting just for fun, for friends and family, for their businesses. Mm-hmm. And then eventually I started to do some consulting on the side, charging some, some fees to do the campaigns for uh, businesses. And at some point I decided, you know what, I can monetize this. Uh, I love what I do, and uh, let me do this full time. And that's when I opened up my agency. Wow. Well, it's, yeah, it's amazing how you went from, you know, like I said, being involved in jewelry and then realized once the recession came and that things had to be done a little differently so that you can continue to maintain yourself and be seen. And I, and it's a, thinking about even back then versus how it is now, having to go on through the pandemic and how many people had the issue of not knowing how to pivot and move forward. Because some of those businesses, even though they might have been popular, they don't always use that SEO. They don't always have a website and all that type of stuff. So what do you do with those type of clients? And have you had some of those type of clientele within the last year and a half um, who had those issues 
that they just weren't prepared for something like the pandemic? Well, I don't think that anybody was really prepared for what we all have gone through over the last 18 months or so. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like, um, you know, uh, if, if you have your business closed up, for instance, I have some businesses that are just local businesses, you know, when, when the uh, government decided that you can't go to restaurants or you can't go to uh, certain businesses, you know, they, they just sat there idle until, you know, things were safer for everybody. Right. And so as, as things picked up again, um, you know, you have to do different kinds of marketing to, to try to get people's attention. Back in the day, maybe 30 years ago or even 20 years ago, uh, locally here in Los Angeles, I would advertise in the Los Angeles Times. Now with Google and Yahoo and Bing and, you know, mm -hmm. Facebook and everything, I feel like um, people have kind of g uh, gone away from that kind of marketing to online. Like if you have, you know, you, you need a mechanic, your car broke down, you go straight to a search engine and you Google it and you right. try to see if there's a mechanic nearby that can come and tow you and, and um, you know, repair your car. And so I, I feel like the, the, you know, things have changed drastically. I don't think it's going to go back. I think we're just going to continue going forward in this, in this realm. And uh, it's good for small businesses to be able to, um, you know, start their digital marketing campaign because it takes time to get, you know, um, to get traction. It's not something that just happens overnight. Exactly. So, and so what do you do with those individuals who don't have an actual website? How does their business still get the opportunity to be seen through using SEO? Well, if you don't have a website, it's difficult to get optimized in the search engine. Mm -hmm. So you have to have, you know, uh, um, a website to be able to do your marketing. Now, if you're on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, you don't necessarily need, um, you know, you don't need a website, okay. but you have to have some kind of funnel that, you know, that they can at some point um, go to a landing page or at least, you know, you have a phone number there or something to be able to convert those people that are coming in. But on uh, Google, generally there is, you know, you, you uh, rank for a particular keyword. Let's say you're sitting in front of your computer and you need an attorney. Mm -hmm. And if you type in, you know, personal injury attorney, it's usually, it has a list of websites that it recommends that you go to. So you have to have, uh, I strongly suggest that, you know, anyone listening to this, that they have a website to be able to compete. Right, right. And like I said, even just, the, even if it's just right. a landing page, that's even better than nothing because it, at least on that one page, because I know a lot of companies are definitely falling back from having a full, full website and just doing the landing pages that provide enough information that can at least give that um, individual who's researching or searching for somebody the information they need to have at that point in time. And like I said, it gives a, some type of connection. So explain to my listeners, what's the difference between SEO and SEM? So uh, SEO is um, short for search engine optimization. So if you're on Google, Yahoo or Bing or other search engines, if you type in something that you're looking for, you have on the search engine results page, uh, you have the top two or three uh, websites that come up that are sponsored, they're advertisers. And the bottom of the page, there's two or three that are advertisers. Now, the middle of the page there, there's 10 on a page. Those are organically listed there. Mm -hmm. So you can't buy that listing. It's something that Google pairs up the website with the user. So it, it understands the user and the user intent. And it tries to match it up with a website that it thinks that the user and the website would be a good match. It's kind of like playing the matchmaker and saying, hey, I think you two should meet. So it gives 10 per page on the organic part. And so again, you can't buy those positions. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's real estate that's not available for purchase. It's based on the algorithms that Google has to determine, um, you know, pairing up the two parties. Now, search engine marketing encompasses a number of things. It, it has to do with 
um, everything under SEO. You know, if you're looking for links, the content, the performance, the, the uh, searching, and also to do with um, uh, paid ads. So those are, uh, you know, under the umbrella of everything else would be under search engine marketing as with uh, search engine optimization. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's interesting because I, like I said, when we were kind of talking earlier a little bit that not a lot of people know what the difference is between SEO and SEM. SEO seems to be kind of the standish, standoutish thing that you hear people talk more about um, when it comes to dealing with their business and their website. So it's always great to have that understanding of the two of them. So give us some insight about what else would you advise to any business when it comes to, you know, getting the business out there in a way where, especially if they're local, but you say you deal with local and international. So how does an individual, depending on that business, how can they reach on the international side as well? So if we take local as as an example, let's say you're selling um, let's say you're a restaurant. So it's a local business. You're you're competing with businesses that are within a you know radius, and so it could be two miles, it could be twenty miles, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And so you have an audience that's within that area, and you have competitors within that area. And so usually when we're talking about um, local, we're really going after everything is local. You know, if you're going after, let's say it's a French restaurant. You can do French restaurants, for instance, um, Los Angeles, mm-hmm. or you could do French restaurants, Beverly Hills. You could drill down to suburbs of uh, the major city. So uh, you, you run a different kind of campaign. You do your links differently. You choose your keywords separately. When you're uh, doing nationwide, let's say you're selling apparel, um, you know, you can go after more generic keywords and get links from all over. And uh, it, it, it's almost an entirely different hat that you have to wear when, when you're thinking about uh, the two types of campaigns. Okay. So everything's a, a little bit of a different process on depending on how far you're trying to be, your reach is going to be. So when, so a lot of times I think about SEO, um, it's, it's really just a different type of formatting of marketing because I know a lot of times when we're dealing with marketing and business that a lot of times people, when they're in business, they don't really always, um, kind of really know exactly who they're, um, target market is. So when you, when I think about SEO, this to me is a really good way of targeting um, the market that you're really trying to um, reach, um, whether it's just, whether it's local or whether it's, you know, international is, do you agree with that? Or do you think that's two, two separate entities? Well, um, when you're looking for your target market, there's different ways to identify that. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a tool that everyone should have. It's a free tool from Google called Google Analytics. And uh, it literally has everything you need to know about the traffic that's coming into your website. Right. For instance, wh- uh, where they came in from, um, you know, which, what was the top landing page, what was the top exit page, uh, you know, did they come in on desktop, mobile, tablet? If they came in on mobile, what device did they use to come in uh, on mobile? And uh, it gives some history and some background on the mo- the, the demographic of people that are coming into your website. Mm-hmm. So it'll give you kind of an idea of your audience. And sometimes you get surprised because, you know, we've had prospects where they think their target market is, you know, something. And it turns out that when we do the analysis, it's a little bit different. So, um, you know, every business is a little bit different. And with digital marketing, you know, it's a moving target. The audience is changing and the trends are changing. Everything's right. changing. So it's good to have these reporting uh, platforms to be able to keep track of what's happening. Okay. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Things are definitely changing consistently. So to, to be able to understand your target market is, is very important. And the analytics side is always important. And so when you have a new, very new business person, um, they're just kind of getting up off the ground. Give uh, the listeners um, a kind of a step-by-step process of how you get them up and going. Sure. So let's say we have a, you know, uh, we have a prospect 
And what we want to do, first of all, is we want to do a keyword analysis on, on their website. We want to see what keywords they're ranked for already. And what are the keywords that they would love to rank for? And so uh, we want to lock in on, you know, if someone's sitting in front of Google, what do they type to find them? Mm -hmm. And we want to be very clear on, um, you know, the keywords that they would love to rank for. We don't want to go through all this effort for a keyword that they're going to rank for and get traffic to their website that, they, you know, it, it's not important to them. So it's a lot of work to get ranked. Might as well, you know, identify the keywords that are going to, um, you know, make a difference in the bottom line of a company. And so once we identify the keyword research for, for the company, we usually ask for five to 15 direct competitors. And we run reports on those competitors to see which keywords their competitors are ranked for. And we put together a report and, um, you know, we want to understand which keywords that the prospect wants to uh, rank for. Now, after that, we have a meeting with the clients to um, advise them on certain keywords that we suggest. Because what we're trying to do is we're trying to have very relevant keywords for the client. But also we want higher search volume and lower competition level on the keywords. Mm -hmm. So back in the day, uh, to give you an example, a mistake that I made was that I went after the keyword jewelry. And so uh, when I had my jewelry business. So jewelry covers, are we looking to sell jewelry? Are we looking to buy jewelry, appraise okay. it, repair it? Like, mm -hmm. what are we doing here? Mm -hmm. And is it a, a bracelet, a necklace, a diamond, a, you know, a sapphire? A hundred different subcategories of that. And so first of all, the odds of, a small business like ours getting ranked for the keyword jewelry or gold is very difficult. Mm -hmm. And on the off chance that we get ranked for that keyword, what it does is it's going to be exactly what we're looking to sell under the umbrella of jewelry. So the example that I always give is we, we had a keyword um, men's diamond platinum wedding band. And so that search maybe has couple hundred searches a month coming through. But if you rank on the top page for that, you're going to get a percentage of those people that search for that to come mm -hmm. to your website and you're going to have a much higher conversion rate. And so we go after keywords that, you know, are a long tail keyword, you know, more than two or three words to describe the keyword. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, you know, we go after over, we, we go after very specific so that we don't need tens of thousands of visitors to websites to make a sale, we're going after very fine traffic that uh, is exactly what our client, uh, you know, specializes in. Right, right. And so that's where we come in and we say, okay, you know, this, this keyword, even though it would be great to rank for it, we're not there yet because there's so much competition for that keyword. But here's a keyword that's similar to that, and it has way less um, uh, competition for it we can start off with, with this keyword. And then when they land on that particular page, then we can take them to whatever page we want after that. Hmm. Yeah, I like that because I'm sitting up here thinking as you were talking how you were using that example on jewelry. That's a very good example and it's similar to, I'm thinking of how we have a lot of coaches. So when you were talking about a business coach, it's like, okay, well, what type of coach are you talking about? You could be, there could be millions of them out there. And so how do you find a way to stand out so that you can be at the top of the, the line, so to speak? So, you know, your example is, is absolutely important to, for people to understand when they're coming into business that you have to have some specific ways uh, that so that you can be searched easily with versus having to be in the big pool that you probably will never be found in. So that's very interesting. So Eric, give us some advice to anybody who is new coming in business. And of course, you know, we all know that coming in business is always um, something that we work hard at and we can, it can be hard to figure out what we need to do. And especially in something on SEO and SEM, because there are a lot of people who don't believe that these things are necessary. They always feel that, Hey, I'm in business and I'm doing good. People can find me because I'm doing all these other things on social media and so forth. What other advice would you give a new entrepreneur coming into business? Well, when it comes to, you know, I, I don't, I don't think that I have to sell anybody on, uh, you know, digital marketing and the power that, 
Google, Yahoo, Bing, Facebook, Instagram, these platforms have. Mm-hmm. A lot of traffic is going through these, these platforms. And if you can utilize these platforms to give you consistent leads and to give you consistent traffic to your website, um, you know, it's, it's a, it's a, it, it'll make a big difference in your business. Now, the thing to consider is, let's say, for example, Google. If you're looking to get ranked for a particular keyword, probably Google um, has a website that they've ranked for that, for that keyword. So you have to uh, jump ahead of that website. And that takes time. It's not mm-hmm. something that you can just spin up a website and just Google is going to start to give you traffic overnight. Mm-hmm. It's something that is earned, certain things that you need to do, show consistency. It's kind of like life, you know, you, you don't just uh, suddenly, you know, pick up a tennis racket and become a professional right. tennis player. Right. Uh, you know, just like anything else, you know, you have to keep working at it. And, and at some point, since Google is somewhat vouching for you when it ranks you, in, especially on the top pages, mm-hmm. um, you know, want to make sure that you are... Um, you know, uh, a, a legitimate business and that you, you, uh, you know, that Google's not going to look bad by referring, uh, its traffic over to a website that the user has a bad experience. Right. Now, the big thing with Google, the secret to their success has been that, uh, Google has been very, uh, user centric, meaning that it wants to think about the user first. Many other search engines before them have been advertiser centric. Mm-hmm. And they've tried to uh, sell ads and, you know, generate revenue from the get-go. Right. And so Google has thought, you know what, if I have users and they're happy and they keep coming back, the advertisers will find us. And that's exactly what's happened. So what happens is when you go to Google and you, you search for something, and then when you go from Google to the website and you have a bad user experience, generally we don't even remember the website that we went to. We remember that Google sense of that. Right. So that's why Google is very protective of sending traffic from its website out to other websites. So it wants to make sure that your uh, website is up to snuff, that you don't, it doesn't take 10 seconds to load. That's when you, when you uh, think you're going to a particular website, it redirects you to another website, you know, and, and things like that. Mm-hmm. So that's why you have to make sure your reviews are online, your website is online and certain things are uh, within within certain parameters to have a chance to be getting that traffic from Google. Okay. I have a quick question. Have you ever had a client or found that some clients just don't have good websites and it makes it more difficult for those to get that traffic to them? Of course. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> yeah well you know because that's funny because like i said a lot of people are you know they're kind of gearing to not wanting to have websites but i think this is a great part part of the conversation to have because people really need to understand what it means to truly have a good website so what is your expertise on what it means to have a good uh, website well i'm gonna stay away from the design aspect of it mm-hmm. I, I think that the um, you know, everyone's taste is different and, you know, companies have their logos and their color schemes and things like that. Right. What I look for is to make sure that, uh, like I said earlier, the website loads quickly. Nothing bothers us as a user more than sitting there and staring at the screen or staring at our phone mm-hmm. while the page is loading. We're, we're spoiled. We want it to load quickly. We want to make sure that there aren't any broken links on the website. Uh, sometimes you go to websites where you go a couple of pages into the website and then you backspace and the page is expired. Okay. You know, mm-hmm. things like that where mm-hmm. you want to make sure that it's a good user experience within the user journey of the, of the website. And so I just try to make sure that, you know, uh, you're able to navigate the website properly, mm-hmm. easily. And that, you know, things are tagged correctly and that, um, you know, we're not having all these pop-ups come up and just certain things that Google is looking for. Other than that, you know, whether they want to make their logo a particular color or size or whatever, you know, that's, uh, you know, that's, that's their, their decision, obviously. We just want to make sure that we're not upsetting, you know, the search engine with some of the things that the client wants. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, that, and that's good insight because, you know, I just had heard thinking and as I'm listening to you that you know, it's always the, the big thing about having a website. It's always about the branding. It's usually always about the look and the feel and so forth. And that's all important. But, you know, when you're talking about search engine optimization and you're trying to get people to come to your to get that traffic to that website, I always try to figure out what else is more important beyond just the look and feel of it. So thank you for that mm-hmm. clarification, because it's, I think it's important that those who are coming in business have an understanding, a clear understanding that having a website is important and the way you built it is even more important that everything works properly and everything is done legally, properly, and all of those things that sometimes you just don't really think about. And that is the purpose of having things done and outsourced to the appropriate people. So, you know, for those who are in business and you're listening to this, always understand if you if building a website is not what you're supposed to be doing, then don't do it. <laughs> you know, as I tell people, <laughs> stay in your lane, okay? You be the expert at what you are and what you're not an expert at, you know, make sure that you bring on the appropriate people to do so. So Eric, we are definitely getting close to the end of the show, but I want to ask you how people can reach out to you so that they can um, connect with you. And, you know, if they can use your services, please tell us how we can find you. Sure. If uh, they can go to thisismysouthbay.com. And if you, if you go there, um, there, there's a, Templates, or, or there's a something you could fill out there, uh, your email address and your uh, uh, your email address and your website, and it's a they'll send you a free report on what keywords that website is ranked for, so you can kind of get an idea the the ranking status for the for the website. And if anybody has any questions on SEO strategies or best practices or you know just wants to pick my brain. There's a book now button. They can book a 15-minute uh, free consultation, and uh, both both things are free. All right. Well, excellent. Erica has been such a pleasure having you on and you explaining the differences and how important it is to, you know, get this done for your as your website so that people can actually get their real traffic, that organic traffic, and that's the key word, organic here. And I liked how you talk about. It, everything takes time because we do live in a world of instant gratification. <laughs> so it's kind of yeah. hard, you know, for some people to realize that you have to earn this, you know? So I, I love how you explained all of that. And again, like I said, it's been such a pleasure. Do you have any last words for our listeners this evening? Well, I, uh, like you said, you know, you, you have to have your expectations at a particular state. Keep in mind that search engine optimization is the long game. I found that over time, um, it overtakes, you know, most of the other campaigns that you might be doing online mm-hmm. uh, that you just have to put in the time. In the meantime, keep doing whatever else you're doing and you can repurpose the content that you're you're doing for your social media or doing, you know, whatever you're doing. You can repurpose it for your SEO campaign until you start to build up a budget for, for your SEO campaign on its own. All right. All right. Again, like I said, thank you so much, Eric, for your time this evening. It has been a pleasure to have an opportunity to chat with you. And I know you're very busy. So this is a great, like I said, information. And, and before we close tonight's show, you know, I hope you all learn the importance of search ability while promoting your small business online. Very, very important. And I'm using these words because this is exactly what Eric does, this is this is his expertise. And if you need that help, if you can't reach out to him directly, you can you're more than welcome to reach out to me. We'll get you connected because having um, your business set up for SEO and SEM, I think, is important. And so for those who are dreaming about starting a business, make sure that you add this part as a, a list of your dreams of getting accomplished, you know, because it's important to make sure that you realize that everything takes time, but at the same time, you can still have a very successful business. And if you would like to reach out to me to have that discussion about getting your business started, you can contact me at Kimberly at WSBILC at gmail.com. And let's chat about those dreams so we can turn those dreams into goals. And of course, if you want more of your resources for success, you can donate to support our podcast at any time. We have a cash app that's available, which will be in the information. But you also can go to the website at www.wsbilc.com to do your donation as well. And again, we'd like to thank you all for listening to us tonight. We will be back next week with more amazing guests and be sure to follow us on iHeartRadio or wherever you listen to your podcast. But until then, enjoy the rest of your evening and good night. Good night, everyone. We will be back next Thursday evening at 7 p.m. 
follow us on Spreaker, www.spreaker.com slash user slash WSBI. View our new WSBI website anytime at www.wsbillc.com and on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Instagram. 